I've we always wanted to grab pumpkins. <laughs> and we can try to, when you get to go enter them in the fair, the biggest ones. Okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> now we're trying to win prizes. <laughs> now we're, we're experts on this. <laughs> She's going to grow the biggest pumpkin in what Reno. What if I fucking do? I'm going to come outside <laughs> and I'm going to read it poetry every single day. And it's going to come from the heart. Every day. Oh, you're going to read a poetry? Yeah, it's going to grow as tall as me. Five so foot when eight. we write a book, five foot say, eight. this is five how you grow the best five foot nine and Tim's poetry. Though. I like to teach, and that is everything that like Black Eye Nutrition is built and founded upon, like the notion of education. It's never telling, it's never ordering, it's never like directing. There's always like teaching and passing along skill sets and like, you know what I mean? Like we're always promoting growth. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> Can you take a picture of my dating profile? <laughs> Farmersonly.com! Oh god. <laughs> this is just black coffee. The cup is a big fat lie. It says, like, be about love. I'm not really that way. But I would like to like people more than I do. I just don't love most people. But back to plants. I have been in the health and fitness industry 13 years and food and the power of food is something that's super, super important to me and something I'm super passionate about. So I'm Ashley. I grew up on a farm, so farming has just kind of been a part of my life for a long time. This will be my third year growing food. Um, my first two years I had the help of Miss Chloe. I love gardening. I think a lot of people don't know that but my mom forced me to garden when I was little. <sighs> it was so miserable. I wouldn't say I was super excited about it when I was younger. I think uh, when you're forced to do things, it's not as fun. And I was like 13, got working in the fields, and I was like, okay, this, I don't know if I lo love this so much. And so my goal was always kind of to get out and like get into a city, and so I did that and realized I missed the farm you know and because uh, growing up we did always we had like a huge garden and we always had fresh vegetables and and fruit and everything and chickens and fresh eggs and things like that so i hated gardening for like the first three years because it was almost like a punishment but then i don't know what happened but somewhere along the line i just started loving it um, a couple years ago i moved kind of back to where i'm from in the california delta area and i told my dad i wanted to start my first garden so I actually um, had never really had my own garden before and my dad was super excited that I was like into farming and so he came over and helped me build like a big raised bed and I just kind of trial and error learned how to grow stuff. I don't have a huge knowledge base for vegetables and fruits and such but decorative plants, landscaping, indoor plants I love. Chrissy texted me she said so Ben and I were looking at houses to rent and we came to this house and the first thing I told Ben is this is the one because the yard's big enough for Beeves to have her garden <laughs> and so that sold me. I literally walk down the street and name off plants as I'm like passing them because I think it's really fun. And I think it's going to be a whole new set of challenges with the different climate and things like that. I've learned what grows really well in my area and it's going to be very different here and and you have to worry about frost a lot more, so got my whole little gardening guide and I'm really excited. Needed to transplant by May 1st and we should have already had them growing. So broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, lettuce, and spinach are out. Onions and potatoes and peas are but out. But how accurate is that? Because this so town I don't, is freezing. It, yeah, it does actually say down over. here. It does say down here uh, once the soil is near 60 degrees. So I don't know how you test this temperature. We're, the it's definitely not 60 degrees. So yeah. So we can. We still put a meat thermometer in it. <laughs> Essentially, that's what you do. Um, and you they, they have thermometers. For yeah, them. it's that's it's, it's, it's like what it is. Yeah, it's what they use in it's Antarctica. Just, when they, it's just longer. Yeah. For the ice cores? Yeah. I personally don't have any experience growing food. I really don't have much of a green thumb, even with houseplants. I'm notorious for overwatering. Um, so this is a whole new adventure for me, trying to grow edible plants. My background, though, gives me a good knowledge base on the importance of gardening and of urban agriculture 
and of creating green spaces in urban areas. It was living in New York City that I was like first very exposed to like the concept of urban gardening. Like I didn't even really know it was a thing and then living in New York City I started seeing it. I was like that is so freaking cool but I didn't even know how to begin to start. So out of sheer curiosity I went to Pinterest and I wasn't a Pinterest person and I essentially typed in urban gardening or like make your own like flower beds because I had no idea. So I essentially over the course of a couple months like taught myself about like raised planters and drip systems and stuff all through Pinterest out of sheer fascination and just like reading online. And I didn't know if I was ever gonna like execute and actually build out a garden in my backyard. Um, then Sarah came to visit me and we actually did a podcast on sustainability. Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of our generation without preventing future generations abilities to meet their own needs. We're not just seeking to be profitable but we're trying to balance people, planet and profit all together. So everything that we do incorporates the impacts on the planet, the impacts on other people, and the ability to grow economically. She talked all about growing for your region, making sure you grow foods that are like naturally occurring in your region. And I was like fascinated by that. So of course the first thing I did is like I started looking up like what naturally grown in Nevada and stuff like that. And so Chloe moved to Reno soon after and I went and I got cinder blocks and I built my raised bed planter and I filled it and I did all the soil layering like I learned how to do and everything. and. Um, we planted it and it was it was just a super cool experience because even though the garden got destroyed by our dog soon after, I'll never forget the night I ate a salad that was entirely grown from our own garden in the backyard. Like I got like emotional over that fucking salad. And I was like, oh my God, this is the greatest, this is like such a cool feeling. I grew everything, I grew broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, bell peppers, eggplants, tomatoes, um, rainbow carrots, Swiss chard, rainbow beets, like everything I could possibly try to grow. Winter started um, a little planter in my house to kind of get the seeds started and then transplanted those, so that was a, a new thing, and I was thinking we could kind of do that here, like especially because the weather's been a little weird this season where right now I would think we would start planting, but just snowed yesterday. So, you know, like that would have just killed all our plants. So if we started some seeds maybe in the house um, and then kind of get a plant going. But no, there. you're talking seeds. <laughs> she wants us to grow from seeds. Oh, girl. I would only ever grow beets from seeds. I had delicious beets and they were not from seeds. Why do you hate me so much? Do we want <laughs> carrots? Wait, hold yes. on. So all of this is from seeds. Carrots. Yes. Um, so, fries. She's like, wait, plant. She's like, no, seeds. seeds. They're both like, what? No. When you're first kind of starting farming, and or even if it's just in pots or whatever, like you screw up a lot in the beginning. What are we gonna do in the barrels? It's like herbs question. and strawberries and shit. Oh, yeah, the strawberries for sure. And the tomatoes maybe in the barrels. That works out really well because we can put the vine in the middle okay. and grow what up. Are you okay, okay. Not, okay. Not, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We're not wait. growing a succulent farm. Can we name? Can we name them all? Every plant, please. I'm not. I have a hard time committing to anything, and so like what what's happened the past years is I get really excited to start the gardening and I'm way into the process, but I'm not the most patient person on earth. So I'll go and I'll read to the plants. I read the plants poetry last year um, for like a week and then I stopped. <laughs> this year I'll read them every day. Okay. I already have the. I already know the poetry books. I'm gonna read them. These will be what we grow the plants with. Oh, we're getting this is all a bunch of things. random shit. Um, Tyler wrote this one with Amanda. They love donuts and deadlifts. That's actually how I know them. They bought donuts and deadlifts, and then they sent me these, and I was like, no shit. And they're actually two really well-known writers, and they're badass. And this will be how I win the state fair: the pumpkin <laughs> contest. <laughs> I'm gonna grow a pumpkin that's five foot nine, as tall as me, and Tim's. How much is it gonna weigh, though? Uh, same as me. <laughs> Just a tall pumpkin. Tall and skinny. You're gonna grow longer. I'm entering the pumpkin in the state fair. <laughs> She's planning already to grow the biggest pumpkin in Reno. I won the biggest pumpkin once. <laughs> You had to, you had to, of course you did. You had to guess the weight at the pumpkin farm. You had to guess the weight. I'm happy this year that I have four committed people to garden because um, I want to see it through because definitely what happened last season 
is we did barrel planters out front and Chloe and I grew like uh, all types of vegetables and all of them and fruits and herbs and Chloe took care of the plants pretty much the entire summer. <laughs> I went out and took pictures of them and talked to them and asked what they were doing, but for the most part, it was all Chloe. So this year, I plan on being involved. I plan on seeing it through. I just like, it's hard when you just have to wait. You know, when you're actually like growing them and they're growing quickly and then like all of a sudden when it kind of slows down and you're just like, oh, I get to watch tomatoes grow. That's when I unfortunately lose interest, but I don't want that to be the case this year. Plants are super amazing, especially if you start them from a seed or the ground, because like you literally get to be there for the entire process. Yeah, they're better than people because they just grow and do real cool things and people grow and become assholes. Humans are the only species on earth that create waste. I think that gardening can serve as an inspiration to how we should live our human lives because it's it really puts you in touch with that full life cycle that goes cradle to cradle of the plant being planted and then grows and then you yield the crop and then if the plant dies it decays and then goes back into the earth. So we see that whole life cycle from start to finish and gardening is, it allows you to be connected with it from the beginning to the end. It's, it's literally the most rewarding thing to like have your own food to pick every day. Like I could just sit out and my, I, I laugh, I could just sit and weed for like hours because I don't know, it's like therapy, like I just love pulling weeds, it's so weird. <laughs> and I never thought I would say that ever, like people are probably like, you're crazy, but it's really, it's really fun. <laughs> So Victory Gardens originated back in World War I when all the men were off to war, so food production had slowed down dramatically. So the government cooked up this plan encouraging people to create their own gardens in their backyards so that they could grow their own food to supplement whatever they bought from the public food supply. So the, the idea was that everyone was contributing to that victory by growing their own garden at home, which is why they're called Victory Gardens. So not only was it indirectly helping the war efforts, but it was also like a morale boost. It was helping people feel like they were contributing and it was also giving them that attachment to that whole life cycle of growing something on your own and cultivating it and then eating it yourself. So I really like that idea and I think of what we're doing and of what a lot of young people are doing these days with their urban farming and urban gardening as our own form of victory gardening. We don't have to do anything huge to have an impact. We just do it in our own backyard or on our balcony. We're, I'm all about like passing on skill sets and like we teach people how to grocery shop. We teach, you know what I mean? Like we're always teaching and like the, I know what I felt when I learned how to grow my own food and when I, when I ate things I grew with my own hands. Like, and I wanna pass that on to as many people as possible and I'm lucky enough to have four of my, three of, math's hard, three of my closest friends all be involved in, you know what I mean, like urban, ag or like some type of like agricultural or like plant, you know, and because the four of us do all share such a strong passion, like we just figured out, we figured the best way to sh like share and show that passion was to essentially come together and we want this series essentially to be like knowledge driven, like we want to teach people the power of growing their own food. This isn't just gonna be like, watch us grow our own food because we're hot and we're gonna garden in our sports bras. Like, of course that's gonna happen. We're gonna garden in our sports bras. We're gonna dump them out. We always do. Um, and things and such. And more things. With what? I guess I could have like brushed my hair or something. Harry Lauder, Harry, Harry, Harry's walking stick. <laughs> I just really like plants. I 
don't know. <laughs> um, I never know how to fucking start. I feel like every video is gonna start with me going, I never know how to start. I don't know how to start, help me. Um, I don't know why I'm nervous for this. I think it's because I feel like I'm the least knowledgeable. Hi, I'm nervous for this, and it's because I'm the least knowledgeable. Hi.